See, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not bitter at all. A lot, a lot of flavor there. A lot more flavor than grocery store celery. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. Today in the garden, we need to focus on our pumpkin plot. We've got some celery in there we need to get out so the pumpkins have some more room to sprawl everywhere. We did a little trial with blanched versus unblanched celery. We're gonna see if we can tell any difference between those two variants there. Then we've got these giant pumpkins that are just growing, I'm talking about super fast, like doubling in size every day. And we need to try to prune those back so we can maximize the size of those giant pumpkins. So we're gonna give that a try. But before we do that, I wanna talk a little bit about garden space and maximizing your garden space so from time to time we get a decent amount of questions asking why we have things spaced out so much in our garden plot so I wanted to take this opportunity and kind of explain why we give ourselves probably a little more space than we need and if you hear a bunch of racket during this video it's coming from right over there they tore down an old barn a while back and now they're piling up all the debris and burning it so that excavator's making quite a bit of racket but hopefully you can still hear me. So back to the row spacing issue. So why do we, in some of our plots, like this pumpkin plot, maximize our space very well and end up with complete ground cover almost? But in other plots like this one, we have our rows spaced way farther apart than they need to be for all these plants to successfully grow. So why don't we give plants more room than they actually need? Well, I'll try to break it down for you and hopefully it will make sense after this. So the first reason is simply because we can. So we have 10 garden plots on our two acre homestead, 11 if you consider the fact that we usually split that real big plot into two kind of separate plantings, but we have lots of garden space. We use a quarter acre of the two acres we have for garden space. We used to grow a lot to sell. We don't sell it anymore. We needed all that space when we were selling stuff. We don't quite need that much space now, but since I have those established garden plots, I want to use them instead of just letting it grow up and being grass that I have to mow. So we have extra space. So we use that to our advantage and give ourselves a little more room. Now the second reason we give ourselves extra space has to do with those two little wild boys I have. When you have a four year old and a six year old, they're getting better at it, but they're not the most careful while being out here in the garden. And if you've got things spaced too close together, it's hard for them to work and kind of enjoy the garden. So we give ourselves more space. So if we do want to bring the kids out here and help with harvesting and stuff, it's easier for them to work in the garden. They don't have to be quite as delicate as they need to be. And the third reason has to do with spraying. So we have to spray our plants down here. We have really heavy insect and disease pressure. And if we don't spray them, then we won't have much to eat. We try to stay as organic as possible with our spraying regimen. The only thing we really don't do organically would be our field peas that are back there. So when you're using organic insecticides or fungicides, coverage is key. You gotta cover the entire plant and get really good coverage with your spray, otherwise it's not gonna be that effective. So if these rows, these two rows of determinate tomatoes here, if they're real close together, and you can see my spraying wand here is kind of long, they're real close together, I can't get in here and get really good coverage on those plants. But if I've got some room here, I can back up a little bit and make sure I get that entire plant covered with whatever we're spraying on it. And then the fourth reason has to do with you guys. If we've got things packed in so tightly, we can't get a camera in there. We really can't show you the differences between these plants and we can't take you along our gardening journey as well as we can when we've got things spaced out so you can see the differences in the plants. So we'll use these determinate tomatoes here as an example again. We've got, can't remember, four or five different varieties planted here. And if these were really close together, we couldn't show you the differences between these varieties. So we give ourselves a little more space so we can show you the differences in these trials. Talk about, okay, this plant is a little more vigorous than this plant. This plant may be a little more disease resistant than this plant. We can really see the differences when we give ourselves a little more room to work. 
And the same concept would apply to these red onions here. Yes, I could have certainly put these three rows of red onions a lot closer together. But because we're doing a trial here, comparing all these different varieties, or in some cases comparing different growing strategies, we want to give ourselves room so we can really highlight the differences here between varieties or between growing treatments. So in cases where we're not doing trials, like this pumpkin patch here where we're just growing three different types of pumpkins not really comparing varieties of the same species we will maximize our garden space also these pumpkins are kind of a one-time harvest so when it comes harvest time there's no worry about getting in there and trampling all these plants because they're going to be done anyways but in the cases where we're comparing things or trying new techniques, yes, we will give ourselves a lot more space than is required so you guys can see what's going on, you guys can see the differences and determine if it's something you wanna grow or something you wanna try in your garden. So we appreciate your understanding with that. We're not just being wasteful to be wasteful with our garden space. There is an intention behind all of it. So now back over here to the pumpkin plot. We got to get this celery out of the way. Most of these stalks have been healed pretty high to blanch them. We left a few stalks or uncovered a few stalks to unblanch them or make them so they wouldn't get blanched. I've eaten a couple of these and they are absolutely delicious. I haven't tried any of the blanched ones yet. And then once we get those out of there, we can do a little bit of management on these pumpkins here. There's that giant pumpkin right there i'm telling you it's amazing how much this thing grows every day i wish i had a time lapse camera maybe i'll just come out here and take a picture every day so we can kind of put it all together towards the end but anyways let's cut a blanched versus an unblanched stalk of celery here see if we can tell any differences in the taste and then we'll get the rest of these out of here so we'll take these two right here side by side for the most fair comparison so Go ahead and cut this one that hasn't been blanched. I have to be a little careful. I do have drip tape down there and I'd rather not puncture it so I can reuse it. So there's our unblanched stalk. And we need to pull some soil away from this one so we can get it cut way down here. I wonder if I can just pull it up. There we go. That's a heck of a lot easier right there. Just trim it off. There we go. So I ranched both of these off with a water hose. We can give them a try and see if we can tell any differences. So this is the unblanched. Stalks are kind of green all the way through. This one is the blanched one. You can see the white on there from where it was covered with soil. So I pulled off an individual stalk, unblanched versus blanched. Let's try the unblanched first, which I've already tried a good bit of. See, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not bitter at all. A lot, a lot of flavor there. A lot more flavor than grocery store celery. We made some incredible chicken salad with this stuff. Been eating it all the kind of different ways. And some people have said that if you don't blanch it, it gets bitter, but at least in my case that right there is not bitter let's see if this one tastes remarkably better than the green one that's pretty good still more flavor than grocery store celery and i can see how someone would think that the blanch one is a little milder than this one but this one, I don't think it's bitter at all. I think it's just really good. This one is definitely a little milder than this one, but I'm not sure there's enough difference in there to, you know, really make it worth your time blanching them. I think in the future, I'm not gonna blanch them. I'm just gonna have them green like this. These are a little harder to clean. Obviously, they're covered by soil. We could have blanched them with newspaper and that would have kept them clean. But um, it's just a little more effort right here and I'm not sure it's worth it. So I think unblanched is the way to go. All right, so now we know which way we want to do this in the future, which is just like that, letting it grow versus taking the effort to pull up the soil around those plants. But I don't consider this as a mistake or anything. That celery is still mighty fine to eat. So let's go in here 
and harvest all the rest of this. We'll put it in these baskets, get it in the shade so it can stay cool until I can wash it off. And we may take the rake and knock that heel down a little bit for these pumpkins to grow all over. All right, so that's what we got. A basket full of beautiful celery. And I hear these leaves are really good in soups and stuff. Haven't tried that yet, but definitely am going to try it. Now, one other disadvantage besides just taking time to blanching them, at least the way we did it, is that you get this browning here on the bottom of the stalk. So I had to clean some of these up a little bit because the outer stalks just look really rough. So I pulled a few of those off, kind of like we do when we clean lettuce. And that looks a little bit better right now. This up here looks really good. Just this down here that was covered with soil is a little brown. So if you haven't been following along and maybe you want to try growing some celery, you might want to know how we did it. So never hurts to be a little bit lucky, right? So we started these in the greenhouse from seed back last fall when we were starting broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, things like that. And celery seeds take a long time to germinate and they take a long time to form a viable transplant. And they took so long that we kind of forgot about them in the greenhouse. We didn't end up putting them in the ground until probably, I want to say it was early December or so. So we put them in the ground later than we should have, at least down here. We did have to cover them with some Agrabon frost protection fabric on those few nights of frost that we had. They do seem to be a little bit tolerant of a small light frost, but I think a real heavy frost would zap them pretty good. So down here, growing them through the winter, we need to be prepared to cover them a little bit or else they'll get bit back pretty good. Now down here, where we don't get that cold, we can obviously overwinter these things. but. If you live up north or maybe in the middle of the country where it gets really cold you're probably going to be growing these things planting them in late winter or early spring now i could be completely wrong about this and if any of you out there need to correct me feel free to do that so in my opinion it's kind of like onions down here in the south where we don't get that cold we can overwinter them where it gets really cold you're probably better off planting them in the spring now I had heard that celery was a pretty heavy feeder and it certainly likes plenty of water. It can drink it up and it helps to have it on drip tape so you can give it plenty of water. As far as fertilization goes though, we really didn't give it a whole lot. We just put some Nature Safe 855 in the furrow at planting and that seemed to be all it needed. And as you can see, we got some nice green stalks only by just fertilizing it once. So by no means am I a celery expert yet. I think we just got a little bit lucky with these. I'm just sharing my observation and experiences from my first time growing it. All right, so we got those celery heels knocked down a little bit there and it's time to prune these pumpkins. Now this is something I probably should have done several weeks ago, but I wanted to give those celery plants a fair shot. So I'm just now getting around to it. We've got quite the jungle in there, but we're gonna try to do our best now if you've ever spoken to any of these giant pumpkin growing experts it can almost seem like they're speaking a foreign language sometimes especially to just an old ordinary gardener like myself but the folks at heavenly hills homestead that sent me these seeds have been coaching me along on facebook messenger giving me some nice diagrams and i think i know what i'm supposed to do here i'm liable to do something wrong but that's okay they tell me that with these seeds I should be able to grow a 500 pound pumpkin without doing anything, without even trying. But if we try and we follow some of their guidelines, we should be able to get a thousand pound pumpkin. So we're gonna try to follow some of their guidelines. Like I said, we may not do it exactly like we're supposed to, but we're gonna give it a shot. So according to their instructions, we need to just keep one pumpkin per plant. So the plant devotes all its energy into that one pumpkin. And I don't know, I think we put five plants in this row. I don't know if all of them have a good candidate yet, but this plant here on the end certainly does. That's the one that's been growing so dadgum fast. So we wanna keep that one. Now we gotta do some pruning here, some pretty intense pruning. So the first thing we gotta do is kind of find the main stem of the plant somewhere in there. It's usually darker colored than the secondary or tertiary stems so we're going to find the main stem we want to leave the secondary branches and kind of spread them out a little bit and then we got to trim off all the tertiary branches or at least that's what i've been told so i'm gonna get started in here and hopefully this will look a lot different in a minute Baby, I won't hear a sound just empty nothing Again. 
Now I could have done this all wrong, but I think, I think this is what we were supposed to do here. So if we travel in here a little bit, there's the main stem of the plant where it was rooted right there. So we cut everything off of it except this stem right here, the dark green one that has this larger pumpkin on it. We trimmed off everything but those secondary stems there. It trails out here. Now that end of that had got clipped with the lawnmower the other day. I hope that doesn't really hurt anything. But if the goal is to devote all the plant's energy to this one pumpkin here, I think we might have accomplished that. Now we still got quite the jungle in here and this plant right over here, I thought about cutting it out of there because there's no real big pumpkins on it yet, but I think I'll wait. We'll see what happens with that. We might need that space. And then sometime this afternoon, we're gonna have to come through here and uh, do a little bit of pruning management on those few plants. But I think we're on the right track with this guy. And if it keeps growing like it is, we're gonna have to give us a pallet pretty soon, something to put this baby on, because if it's 500 pounds, we're gonna have to have a tractor to get it out of here. And I said I was gonna stop with that one, but it kind of got to being fun to me. So I went ahead and came on down here and did these two plants right here. So we got one coming out here. Now this one's not near as big as that other one. And I do think we're supposed to kind of let a couple fruits form and then pick the best one. But we don't have a lot of fruits out here to pick from. So with this plant, we're just gonna go with that one right there. And I may have, made the decision too early on this plant here but it was easier just to go ahead and prune it i got a few i uh, left out there i need to get you can see there's a little fruit right there it looks different than these others it might be a different kind of giant pumpkin anyway we got three of them pruned and the rest of these we're going to wait on some fruits to develop and we'll come in here and prune those two and we should have plenty of room to kind of train these around they told me to train the vines in an s shape so we got plenty of room here we should be able to do that oh and one more thing as i was pruning this guy here i did find one squash bug just one that's all i found while i was doing all this pruning so one's not bad but one advantage to pruning them back heavily like this is that we can spray a lot more of the plant and keep those squash bugs in check when you've got growth like that you can spray and spray and spray on top it's hard to get all inside there and really take care of the squash bugs so there will be some advantages although it takes a little time to doing things this way so in addition to the giant pumpkin seeds the fine folks over at heavenly hills homestead also sent us some special fertilizers that they like to use on their giant pumpkins giant maters giant sunflowers all that giant stuff so this stuff is made by a company called prevagenics and we've got all kinds of different formulations here. So we've got this micronutrient formulation. We've got liquid compost. We've got some cow mag. They said this was especially good on those giant pumpkins. Mobile microbes plus and opulent amino acids. So all kind of good stuff here to try. Now that those pumpkins have been pruned and I can see where the main stem, where the roots are at, I can go in and just mix some of the stuff in a bucket and kind of pour it right there really start feeding these pumpkins here and y'all don't tell eddie over at poor boy's little homestead i'm gonna try some of this on my indeterminate maters too hopefully it works that's our secret don't be telling eddie because he'll be trying to get some of this and use it too so i hope you all enjoyed the video today talking about garden spacing getting the celery harvested and pruning those giant pumpkins hopefully we did that right i'm sure some of you will let me know if we didn't and if any of you are not in the south and you successfully grow celery please share in the comments below when you plant it kind of what your schedule is because i think it's probably different than what we did down here that way to help all the people out who are wanting to grow celery but are not sure when to plant it and if you're watching on youtube be sure to check out our affiliate links below a lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at lazy dog farm even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts don't forget to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where we've got hats shirts our garden journal recommended products recipes all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm Oh, farewell, 
Mm-hmm. By the beauty of your life 